Hello there. Two things today. This is lesson number four. And then I'm going to answer a question that somebody emailed me and they said, do you care if other people around the world use your slider or not? I mean, do, do you care if, if uh, you know, it gets used by more people? So that was a really interesting question. But let me go ahead and start with our lesson today. Uh, we saw in lesson three that it's a very light pressure on the slider and of course that allows a lot of um, stylistic moves because there's so little pressure on it. And one of them is what's called a shake. And uh, a shake you go back and forth over two contiguous holes and it gives you kind of a decorative trill. And so here's what it sounds like. So, because no movement to new note hole positions is so easy, and you can see how friction-free this is, it doesn't have any appreciable or noticeable thick friction at all. So that's, then you can do those on blows or you can do them on draws. But let's get back to this other question. Um, if, it, if it matters to me that people around the world embrace the... Uh, the slider concept. Kettle wall friction does not be slider. No, it does not. <laughs> and I know that may sound strange, but I'm not in this to make money. Uh, the only reason I'm fabricating them for people now who want them is that I'm the only place they can get it. Um, I think that, in my opinion, this instrument, a conventional instrument, is obsolete because the movement to new note hole positions is one of the least comfortable and ergonomic of any instrument that exists right now. And I think that this does exactly what Andre Antonello Nacci said, which is to make it a professional uh, orchestral instrument in terms of, you know, something that you can actually get to the new note hole positions in a, in a, in a good way. But as far as to me personally, no. You know, I think that I, I invented this and created it because uh, somebody over in Asia had a problem with blisters and I thought it was uh, going to be good for me and it, and it has been. But what other people decide to do, it's like, you know, do I really get tied into what style of music other people play? No. You know, do, does it matter to me what instrument people play? No, it does not. Uh, for all of us, you know, I mean, what other people, what their choices are, I respect them. You know, and I think it's great that they're making those choices, but it doesn't make any difference to me, you know. And uh, whether this invention uh, revolutionizes the industry in my lifetime or after my lifetime, it doesn't make any difference to me. Um, I would imagine that no matter how this whole thing courses in history of this invention, it's probably not going to result in any income to me. Uh, you know, or other benefit, other than just helping people. So the reason I offer it to others is to help, you know, if they feel that it's valuable, but it doesn't matter to me what, what folks decide to do with it. Um, also, as you know, uh, I gave this idea to the public domain. There's no patent. Not only is there no patent, there is no way it can be patented because no patent can be enforced in a court given the methodology I used to give it to you and to the public domain, which was to reveal drawings and descriptions and written descriptions um, to the public, which means based on patent rules, you can't patent anything that the public has already been exposed to and that's in the public domain. So by definition, you know, there's no patent protection. So. If somebody sees this and wants to make it, they can, you know. Um, but anyway, so that answered the question about the shake. And you might be wondering, why does that have such a rich sound? Well, it's because I made the slider thick enough to increase the height of it up to about what you'd get on a Suzuki because I like the bigger platform harps in my hand. But you can see it also would increase the resonance chamber on any given hole being played 
by about a quarter of an inch, so it's got a richer tone. It's a lot better tone than you normally would get from uh, stainless steel reeds. Um, so anyway, that's the scoop, and we'll continue with our lessons. And so there's a nice record of what you need to do to play to play this.